Disruption is always the mechanism by which real economic growth is generated. I'm Clayton Christensen, a professor at the Harvard Business School. I have spent my academic career um, studying the problems of innovation. The economist Joseph Schumpeter called it creative destruction. The economy and innovation kept going, but the mechanism by which it kept going was it destroyed the old as it created the new. Schumpeter observed that this happened, and I think my contribution is a model called disruptive innovation that is the causal mechanism by which creative destruction occurs. You know what it says here? They're going to take out all our phones and put in them kind with dials on them. Oh, Graham, that's yummy. Does it say out soon? As soon as a man gets used to one thing, by golly, somebody wants to take it away from him. The, uh, the advent of sophisticated communications technology really has facilitated disruption so that it happens at a faster rate. Your calls are handled in the dial system by an electrical operator. Of course you've got to understand that the dial system doesn't do away with the need for human operators. Although more than half the telephones in America are dial, we have more operators than we ever had before. So prior to um, about 1990, if I needed to call you, the, the electrons actually traveled on a physical circuit to the telephone company's switching gear, and then it switched and went on a physical circuit to your phone. And so when we talked to each other, the electrons actually traveled on a, a single physical line. And Cisco came up with this concept called a router. And what a router did was it took the data, whether it was voice or information, and it packetized it in these virtual envelopes wrote the address on each virtual packet, and then just found, uh, fanned it out over the internet. And uh, at the beginning, the router, with its packet-switched technology, could get information from here to there with about a four-second latency delay. And that meant if I wanted to do voice with you over a packet-switched network, it was just very frustrating. You had to be a desperately poor graduate student to do voice over IP. So Cisco and the, the network of companies that worked with it didn't try to address voice. They went after data because packet switching with the four-second latency delay was infinitely faster than first-class mail. Lucent and Nortel that made circuit-switched equipment looked down at the router and they couldn't see value in it because it couldn't be used for voice. And so they kept investing in bigger and better circuit switching equipment to make the quality of voice conversations better and better. But then coming at the bottom, Cisco just kept improving the, the safety and the speed and the accuracy of its packet switching technology until today, you really can't tell the quality difference between a packet switch call and a circuit switch call. And voice over IP just pervades the world. Nortel's gone because they listened to their customers, and their customers needed faster and better voice. They didn't need data transport. So the fact that we can shift data in such extraordinary ways in terms of volume and speed is really attributable to the fact that Cisco disrupted circuit switching.